Hi, everyone. My topic of discussion is STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. How do we foster skills in the young people of today in our country to alleviate the skills shortage that we're currently experiencing? I want to ask you a question. What, do, what does baking and using a cell phone have in common? They actually involve science and maths. When you're baking, you put together ingredients. You have to measure. You sometimes even need to multiply. You know, you need to put eggs together, you need to put water, you need to put the milk. That's all science at play. When you use your cell phone, it's all about numbers. So my topic is how do we use science and maths in our life today? Why science and why math? Math is the glue that holds together the different disciplines. Math is actually an elementary skill that you require even to enter tertiary education. What about science? Science helps us to understand why things work the way they do. Why does the human body function the way it does? The way the blood flows when an airplane takes off? That is all science. That is all math. Now, with the skills shortage in our country, we need to find ways to resolve this. We need to find ways to make young people have a desire and a passion to develop their maths and science skills. So my idea worth spreading is let's fix the problem from the bottom. Let's fix the problem right from childhood. How do we do that? Let's make the home a better place. Let's fix the home. What does the home consist of? It consists of the parents, the family, and the environment that the child is in. This is the environment that shapes his ideas. This is the environment that shapes his thoughts. As he grows, this environment it influences how he thinks, how he acts. So I'm going to make use of an, um, what is called an engagement pyramid. This was actually developed by Shalin from a company called Almeta. Now, this is used by companies to engage their customers in social media. But I'll apply it a bit differently regarding the science and technology industry. If we look at the bottom, it starts with observing. When children are small, they observe what we do. They observe what the parents are doing, what the brother is doing, what the sister is doing. After that, they start following. They begin to say, OK, this, this seems to work. This is how we do it in the family. From following, they begin to endorse it. It becomes a part of what their day-to-day -day life and activities are. From endorsing, they actually start contributing. If in a family, People love reading, people love TV. The child is just bound to do the same. From contributing, they begin to own it. They begin to lead. They begin to spread it to their friends, to their community. That being said, our children mimic our behavior. We have little Johnny here. He can see his father busy fixing his jeep. So what does little Johnny do? He also takes his tools, which obviously don't do anything. <laughs> and then he starts to fix his car. Not just little Johnny, there's little Sally as well. Where did she learn to shop? Where did that passion to love shopping come from? <laughs> it came from the mother. She always sees mommy in Woolworths, mommy at pick and pay. Then she's like, I think, I think this is the way to go. <laughs> so that being said, it means our children, it means our youth, they mimic our behavior. They, we might not see it, we might not realize it, but they are observing every little detail. Every little thing that you do, they are looking at it. So having said that, we can possibly say science is a part of everything we do. Every day we are interacting with science. I'll give one specific example. When you go to the petrol station, the attendant will ask you, can I check your water? Can I check your tire pressure? Can I even clean your window? That is all science. So can you, can you maybe spend some time with your son while you're at the petrol station and say they need to put pressure in our tire because if there is no pressure in the tire, the car will not move properly. There will be friction between the tire and the tired road. It might, you might not need to explain it as technically as I've done, but let them be aware that science and maths are not all about the numbers and the figures that we see in class every day. They are in basic day-to-day basic -day activities. A quick question, how many of us read the manual when we buy any gadget? <laughs> Whether a television or a kettle, I'm sure it's very, very few of us. But do you know on that manual there is very simple, very basic mathematics, very basic science. And often we actually damage our gadgets because we do not read. Because we think 
You know, it's a kettle, it's standard. I just have to hold the handle, put some water, connect it. That is science, but if you don't do it properly, if you don't read your manual, you won't understand actually more of what is behind it. So your children, they don't read as well. They will mimic what you're doing. They begin to develop a culture where they, they just do things without checking, without verification. So how do we improve the environment, the home environment that our child is staying in? Is that environment where they are brothers, where they are the sisters, where they are the uncles? That's the environment that helps to shape the child's behavior. That's the environment that helps to make the child develop his thinking. But now there's a problem. Most of the time, the parents are either not interested in math or when they were in school, math was so difficult or their teacher was so bad, they just decided to leave it. So that phobia of mathematics, that phobia of science, it now cascades down to the children. Now the children are also scared of maths. They just realize, you know what, let me just do something else. Maths and science is not my thing. But it came from the parents. It was all about perception. So whatever perceptions we're passing on to our children, they affect their future. If a parent passes on a perception of fear of maths, a phobia for maths, you're actually preventing opportunities that that child can have. He, can, he won't be able to be a pilot. He won't be able to be an engineer or a doctor because he doesn't have the elementary skills that are required to get there. One interesting point the government always talks about is our country, there's no culture of reading. We don't like reading, but we love Facebook. We can read what's on Facebook. We can read what's on Twitter, but come books, come technical material, we don't like reading. We need to develop that skill. We need to develop that passion for reading. I would actually propose that every home has a library. It might not be 100, 200 books, but have some sort of collection of books that your children can read, that your, 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 you know, your, your siblings can read. Once they see you reading, they will begin to read. If they see the mother, the father is always on the tablet, that's what they're bound to also do. So in the home as well, to better make the environment better, we need to improve and check on the child's performance in school. How many parents are actually actively involved in their child's development. Remember, as he grows, the attention you give to him affects the way he progresses. If a child is in a very violent home, an abusive home, he takes that. That becomes imprinted in him growing up. So why don't we imprint the right thing in our children, in our youth? Let's imprint the right values. Each family needs to have some values, you know, a vision. You can make a vision and a mission for your business. You can do the same for your, for your family. You can do the same in your home. Have a vision and a mission. In, our, in this family, we're going to have engineers, we're going to have doctors, we're going to have lawyers. You know, begin to shape it while they are still young and begin to tell them, son, daughter, I see you doing something great. So how do parents respond when their children do not perform well? I'll give you an example. Many years ago when I was still in high school, I failed dismally in the midterms. It was so bad that from being number one to being number 29. And my dad, if you are not number one, you are not good enough. So what did he do? He took our nice television, packed it in the box, put it on top of the wardrobe. That entire holiday, I had no TV. My brothers had no TV. My mom had no TV, all because I didn't do well. So come the new term, I performed so well because of that little act from my dad. He realized if I don't do something, if I don't make a stand, this child is going to fail. So the entire holiday, I read my books cover to cover. And as a result, it helped me in my career. The other aspect we need to work on, our children, what are we feeding them? Do you actually know that the food that your child eats affects his brain development? It actually affects how they think, how their mind progresses, how their reasoning and their critical skills develop. So if you think that taking your child to Crawford or one of these nice schools is the solution, that's not the solution. Because you will just be there listening to the teacher just thinking, this is not working. Why don't you start in the home? Make your home the best school for your child. By the time he goes to school, he's a step ahead. I'll give an example. This is what I bought my son. He's just one year old. I'm teaching him math and science just from this object. 
It's got a rectangle. It's red in color. There's a lot I can teach him from just buying him this little thing. But interesting enough, because of the trends of today, this technology, my son prefers my phone and my tablet. He doesn't like this. And constantly, I have to fight with him to give me back my phone. So as parents, let's understand the trends affecting our children. What is it that is affecting them today? Interesting enough, children easily enter into dating. Do you know that dating is a lot of work? It takes a lot of effort. If we could channel that effort, that mindset towards math and science, it's the same amount of effort. You need reasoning in a relationship. You need reasoning to date, you know? Let's channel that energy to the right things. Let's get them the right toys, maybe chess. Well, if he's two, he might not understand what it's about, but he will ask questions. When I was growing up, my dad used to take me to the farms where he was uh, consulting for the farmers. Each and every day, he would teach me one scientific term, words like evaporation, photosynthesis. I had no idea what it was, but I would go and read it up later. And that instilled in me a sense of knowledge, a sense of intriguing myself to acquire more knowledge. So in the world of today, obviously, kids use apps. Kids use tablets. What is it that is on their tablet? Most of the time, it's social media, WeChat, Facebook. Let's put a bit more there to intrigue their knowledge. Let's put some math apps, some science apps, some games, not necessarily the boring stuff, but some, something that intrigues them to learn better. Last but not least, language. We are all aware math and science are mostly taught in English. So if you don't develop your child's language skills, they won't be able to perform better. They might be smart, they might be good, but they might not be able to achieve their fullest potential. So let's develop their science. Kia lebuka, danki, siabonga.